Now you may have heard of the typical narrative of if you like UI and buttons, choose front end. Or if you like data and numbers, choose back end. That is not what this is gonna be about. We're gonna look at other metrics like job stability, work-life balance, whose job's easier, to help you choose between front-end or back-end development. So let's get into it. All right, so work-life balance. Really, this has to do with how the software is delivered to the customer. All right, so you have your front-end, and if you're back-end, you are delivering code to a server and this is done fairly quickly. You might have a deployment day where you push the code you've been working on to the server or you might have continuous CI CD when the code gets merged into GitHub, it automatically gets deployed to the server. So once it's deployed, you're now serving that customer new code and the customer is hitting that live server. And this front end can be web, it could be an Android app, it could be an iOS app, it could be a voice assistant, we don't know. It's however the customer is interacting with the application. Now, if one of these servers goes down, that's not good. This means you constantly have to be ready to jump in, figure out what the issue is, because these are live systems that are constantly being interacted with. Now, typically you'll have someone that's on call, like watching these servers, looking at their metrics, looking at all of that, making sure nothing is going wrong and there is no issues. If you do see issues, you'll probably see customers complain about it or you'll have your metrics. In my opinion, backend has a worse deal when it comes to work-life balance because someone has to be on call. Typically it's not the whole team, it's like you have an on-call rotation once every however many people are on your team or in your on-call rotation, but that's something that can affect your work-life balance. You have to be ready to jump in to troubleshoot an issue if something happens with these servers or if your backend is hosted on Google Cloud, AWS, Azure, any of these other cloud platforms, if their system goes down, now it's affecting you. So typically that doesn't happen, but um, this is a live system that can go down at any time. Now there are a lot of different platforms you can work on as a front-end engineer. You might be working on iOS, Android, a website. I'm going to talk about the use case where you're working on something that's released to the customer, like an app version release cycle. So if you're an iOS developer, you're all about the app release. You're about getting the app release ready to go to the customer. And so you are going to publish a new version to the app store. And this old version is no longer available on the app store for download. And so what that means is if there's an issue that's in this version of the app store, you're not gonna be able to address it until the next app release, which typically could be every two weeks or a month, it depends on, it could be every day, depending on how you know your relationship is with the Apple store, but typically it is less often than how often the backend engineers are deploying. So with that work-life balance, the way it comes in is like, you're gonna work really, really hard to get this app release out to the customer. And you might have a crunch time before the app release to get all those new features in so the customer can update their app or download them from the app store. But once that version is released, you're smooth sailing, you're good until the next app release when you need to prepare that for release and get it released again. There's really nothing you can do between app releases that will fix the code in the current app release. The thing is, is that this 0.9 version, it doesn't go away. It lives on someone's iPhone 7 forever until they decide to update, or if they never update, it just lives on their iPhone 7 forever. So that's not good if it's some bad code especially if it's a security vulnerability it's going to live on that app version forever i don't know if you can revoke an app version from the store i feel like they would just revoke the entire app entirely comment down below if you know if that happens now job stability which role front end or back end is it easier to get a new job in well with front end you're limited on how the user interacts with your system so if the user is interacting on the web it's a website if you're, the user is interacting on an android or ios app that's the type of developer you are and that's the type of developer the hiring manager is looking for this what this means is let's say Let's say your company decides to support a website, an iOS app, 
they're supporting all of these things. They're using React or React Native, I don't know. And they're using the same code on Android, iOS, and the website, and it's great. And then so now they want to get rid of the website. And they want to change to just using Android and iOS and they're gonna hire Android specific developers and Swift iOS specific developers. That's not good for the people that work on the website, right? Now these people that worked on the website, we're not hiring them and now we're just hiring Android and iOS and like, if you happen to specialize in that, that's great, but now these website people, that's not good. Or you could have the opposite where the company gets a lot of web traffic and now we're gonna X our Android and iOS app or we're only gonna have an iOS app. You're limited on how customers are interacting with your system. The very narrow case of this is the voice assistant developer. So believe it or not, there are people that specialize in developing voice apps for the Amazon Alexa, the Google Home, the Google Mini, these voice things that we put in our homes back in 2015, 2016, and you can, you sure you have the developers that built those things, but then you also have the developers that built third-party applications on top of those things. And so, believe it or not, there is an app store for voice assistants where you can enable and download apps. But that was one of my first jobs, working on that. How many voice assistant jobs do you think there are in creating? that. Now, technically that did use languages that can be applied to other technologies, and so Node.js, it was using the cloud platforms of AWS, Google Cloud, and now all of that has become a drag and drop click to build that, or no one's developing it at all. Another case of this would be virtual reality or augmented reality. When those go away, the people that built the front ends for that they're gonna have a tough time finding their next gig. You could probably pivot to another industry, but you're not gonna be able to specialize forever in that one thing because it's so dependent on how the customer directly interacts with your system. As the user experience changes, the technology you use to build the user experience is probably gonna change too. Now, thinking of this from the back end perspective, it doesn't really matter what my front end is. It could be an Android app, it could be iOS app, VR, AR, voice assistant. I'm probably gonna need some kind of database. I'm probably gonna need some way to send a notification to the customer. I'm gonna need to be able to deal with traffic no matter where that traffic is coming from. The back end is the core functionality. Now, like with front end, the back end does have specialties. Some are trendier than others, like blockchain, AI. Will these go away? Maybe. But if you become one of these machine learning developers, you're pretty good for at least the next 10 years. With backend, there are different tech stacks at different jobs. So just because you work on microservices in Java at one company, other companies might not use Java. They might use C Sharp or Go or one of these other languages. Now, some of these companies, if you happen to work in that space of microservices, they're willing to hire someone that did not specialize in the language of their company. So if you're a Java developer at one company, there's another company that is doing microservices in C Sharp, you could probably move over. It just depends on the hiring manager and whether they're open to that and what the job market is like. They're probably gonna hire someone that's in their same tech stack, but it's not like a completely off limits thing because you're solving similar types of problems. But this is a limitation you do have to work with and some will filter out your resume at you know the system level and you won't even get the interview. And this limitation is because of what some tech lead decided years ago when they were first making the code base and they decided Go or C Sharp or Java and like you don't happen to code in that. They probably chose that because it's something that they had experience with and something that they could build quickly because they just got hired and they needed to build this thing quickly for the product owners. And now it's affecting your job search, the thing that they chose. But speaking of trends, you also have front-end engineers now competing with boot campers. There aren't many boot camps that specialize in back-end development or at least some of the back-end frameworks. They do exist, but there's definitely less of them. You also have to think of team size. On a team, are there more back-end engineers or more front-end engineers? How many people do you have that have that same skill set? In my opinion, I think you're gonna have more back-end engineers if scaling is a problem. If you're getting lots of traffic and you have to design more things to scale up or deal with performance issues, 
it's probably gonna be a back-end problem. So you're gonna have more back-end engineers. So when thinking of which job is more difficult, it's really what types of problems are you gonna be facing and then quantifying how difficult those problems are. So if you're on front end, the biggest problem I think you're dealing with as a non front end engineer is memory. You have to create this app. And again, I'm thinking only of iOS and Android. Memory is a big limitation of iOS and Android because if your app is a certain size, you have to be connected to Wi-Fi in order to download it. From my understanding, it's also the app store probably enforcing let memory constraints because you can't have an app that's taking 32 gigabytes of memory. So you have to figure out how are you gonna use these resources? Maybe you're dealing with very large images or in the case of AR, I could see that being a problem of if you're dealing with massive video files or if it's some kind of gaming experience, you have to figure out when to like offload certain resources, download certain resources without it affecting the performance of the application. You also have to deal with backwards compatibility on the front end. Like we were saying before, just because you release a new app version doesn't mean the old app version goes away. It stays on someone's iPhone 7 indefinitely. So you have to make sure whatever changes you make to the new version are backwards compatible for the earliest version you're supporting or continuing to support. You also have to deal with localization. So if you are a global company and you need to make sure that the text is in French or Italian or English for the appropriate customer, depending on their geographic location or where their account is based out of, that's something you also have to consider. It should render differently depending on the customer and what they have their settings as. And with that rendering comes screen load time. You can't have a screen spinning for over a minute and not showing any updates or any kind of progress or you're just, you're just people will exit out of the app and you'll have no user engagement. So that's another problem you have to solve for. And that could in some cases be a backend problem. Maybe it's a backend performance issue, but the front end has to develop something. So even if that load time is a long time, they have to show these like fake screens to make it seem like progress is happening and keep the person engaged. With backend, it's all about scalability. If you don't have to worry about scale, then the backend is trivial. It doesn't matter how your database is set up because you're only gonna have 10 users. It, it doesn't matter what the table is, just create the table. But as your customers increase, you need to be able to handle the traffic and data efficiently and make sure that data is accurate. You can't be confusing customers. But the reality is it's not about which ones are more difficult. I'm sure you could discuss all day, is it front end, back end, which one's harder? It's about what problems do you want to deal with? So as you're working through all these problems, at some point you'll probably get promoted. And so which job is easier for you to get promoted at? Well, back end has more impact. So if you fix a performance issue, you fix it for every front end. Not only do the things you work on scale, but your work scales. The back end is where the meaty logic is. And I find backend often has a larger say in design decisions because of the impact it has on performance. But the front end is more flashy. If you're developing these pretty new screens for the new feature and you get to demo it and it looks beautiful and it's a great experience, that can also be really good for you. In my opinion, there are two theories of thought on how you can get promoted at a company. One theory of thought is initiative driven. Sometimes you're handed you know, this pretty bow of a project and you get to implement it and design it. And it's like, we wanna build X feature. And, and then you nail it, you, you build it, you give great demos, great presentations about it. And if your stack had the most amount of work in that project, meaning it was a more back-end initiative than a front-end initiative, then you're gonna get you know, a lot of props for that. And that's good, that's a good point to put when you try to get promoted. Or the second theory of thought is you fix an issue that's not only caused your, the developers on your team pain, but also the developers on other teams. You fix a problem that's been around for a long time and the impact is big. This is the harder way to go. It's really nice to have a, night, a project handed to you to implement. But this can be a hard way to go because it's been a problem that's been around for a long time and no one's solved it, right? So it must be a pretty hard problem. And you might also have to find that problem. This might be something that 
has been causing developers issues, but they don't realize it or they don't realize the pain points in their process. They might not think that SSHing into a server to see the logs of a user is bad. But if you introduce a logging system that allows the logs to be forwarded to a separate system where you can actually search them better, they will realize how great that is and how great it's I can go to the separate system to search logs from users rather than SSHing into a server. But if you can find this problem and describe its impact and deliver the fix efficiently, that's, that's really good. And it's even better if it benefits the system or the load time and it's a metric that the executive really cares about. That is great. Now with all of this, there are a lot of things that are the same across roles. And so whether you do back end, front end, whatever, one thing is documentation. You're probably writing it regardless of which area of the stack you're working at. You also have analytics. And so you're gonna care about the app load times performance on the front end as well as the back end. And you're probably gonna have user metrics or database metrics or system metrics, like what is your response time, what is your error rate? The metrics might be different, but you're gonna have some kind of analytics on both ends to make sure, like analytics and observability metrics to understand what the user is doing and how they're interacting with the system, but also how well your system is performing. With both cases, you're probably gonna have some form of A-B testing. You're gonna have to do continuous learning in order to stay on top of the trends and all that. You're gonna have communities around these different technologies. And so there's a huge community around JavaScript. There's a huge community around C Sharp and Java and Go and Python. That's gonna be the same. In both jobs, you're gonna write code and you're probably gonna to need to be collaborative because you're working with other engineers to build this thing. Front-end engineers are probably working with product. The back-end engineers are probably also working with product. They both have managers. They're both individual contributor positions. So I hope this was enjoyable and gave you some more things to think about when choosing back end or front end, because the reality is whichever you choose for your first job is probably the one you're gonna stick with. At least that's what I've seen with most developers. You can always go across the stack, but it's less common. Thank you for watching and happy coding.